Okay, so we have our new course here, our Math 101. And wouldn't you know it, I named it the wrong thing. So uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and take a look at the settings of the course, okay? This can be a bit daunting at first, you know, uh, this menu. So we have home, announcements, assignments, discussions, grades, people, pages, files, syllabus, outcomes, quizzes, modules, conference, collaborations, attendance, new analytics. You're only going to use a couple of these. Okay, so so don't worry about it. All right, so first we're going to go in and take a look at settings because it's a. Uh, this is basically where the name of the course, um, how you get students to sign up for the course, um, which of these navigation items are available to students. Um, that's where all of this is set. So let's go take a look at the important stuff in there. Okay, so let's go to settings. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I named the course wrong. Okay, it wasn't Math 101. I was Coding 101 that I uh, that I meant to name it. Um, time zone is important, um, so it's easy to kind of ignore uh, dates and times on here. Um, but it can be confusing for students if you don't get that stuff right. Um, you know, if you don't set like you know due dates and this type of thing um, correct in the interface, then when students go in, it's confusing for them. So you do want to set your time zone. Uh, to be correct. Um, okay, um, we're gonna not gonna have any start and end. You just leave all of this blank. Just keep leaving it blank. Um, and then uh, basically the only thing that's really important to us besides the name on this first page, right? So we have details, sections, navigation, apps, and featured options. The only thing that's really important to us on this page is under uh, more options, right? So, and what we need to do here is that because we don't want to type in every single student name, uh, we have to click let students self-enroll, okay? So, and then add a join course link to the course homepage, okay? And then what we have to do is we actually have to click update course details, okay? Okay. And now what you see down below here, so I'm scrolling down, so we're now it's saved on course details. Now we scroll back down, okay, and now we get the actual sign up link. Okay, so this is the link that you would give to students to enroll, okay? So we're going to go over that, but basically they would go, students would go back to the main page that, that you were on. Um, so let's, let's just do that now. Okay, so students, you would give them this link, right? This, in this case, 3BX, 3BHX H7. Okay, the student would go to, uh, uh, let's see here, you're gonna see something in my... Uh, okay, so I'm gonna open up Firefox uh, to be in a different browser, so I'm not uh, logged in. Okay, so the student would go to uh, to register uh, canvas.com. Okay, they would click I'm a student. And then basically they would just put in their join code. So this, this 3BXH7. So in order to sign up for the course that you're making, the student would just put in this number. Uh, then they would put in, remember, remember when the student is signing up to, for them to put in their full name, they can't change it later, okay? And they need to make sure that they put in a username and a password. Um, uh, the username and the password, um, notice that on this form, they don't require, even though my email is in there, um, they don't require an email on this form when the student signs up, which is a real problem. And what is the problem? <laughs> the problem is that when students sign up, they won't remember their password. So if you have the students sign up in this manner, um, then then they should uh, they should immediately um, they should immediately uh, update their email inside of Canvas, which I'll show to you in a little while. Okay, so if they use this form, they're going to set a password. They're going to set a username. Notice they don't have to set an email. Um, and uh, and they're going to immediately forget it. So definitely have them immediately set up their, their email in Canvas. Okay. All right. So that's how we have the students sign up for the course. Okay. So that's a very important thing there. Um, notice that uh, 
yeah, this add, sorry, this add join course link wasn't necessary. It's really just this let students self-enroll. Remember you click update course details and that's when you see this. Okay, you won't see it when you first come into the page. Okay, so everything else just stays the same. Um, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and save that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna go to sections. Okay, so sections, let's say that I teach, um, Let's say that I teach. Uh, let's say that I teach multiple classes, right? So I have first, second, third, and fourth periods. Okay, so basically, and they're all coding 101, right? Like see, I teach four period, three periods a day of coding 101, or for my sake, let, for the sake of the video, let's say two periods. So let's say I have period one, and then I have period two. Okay. Okay, so what, the, what I'm going to do is, um, it would be great if Canvas did this automatically. It does not. Okay, so again, this is one reason why you might want to use your district installation. They might do this for you. But in this free Canvas, uh, basically what you're going to have to do is, once you have these sections in, you'll have all the students sign up with the link that I just showed you. And then you'll come back into the people link. So I'm just going to open it in a new tab. This, pip, this people link right here. So basically you'll see every student that signs up if you click on people. And what you'll do is you'll click on this, you'll hit, you click on this menu to the right here. You will click edit sections. And then for each person you'll put in, say they're in period one, you'll put period one and then update. Okay, and then you'll see their section right here. Okay, the reason why you would wanna do this is that when you're grading, you can limit what you see in the grade book by their section. So, so when you're actually grading stuff by period, uh, you can limit what you see based upon section. So section is really important uh, and that's how you do it. Okay, so navigation is another important one. So it's really confusing to students, you know, just like you came in here and you saw, you know, what is this? <laughs> I should have counted. It's like more than 10 options on the left here, most of which you don't use. Uh, we're actually going to hide a lot of stuff for students, okay? So we're going to drag the items down here to hide them for the students. New analytics, attendance, you probably have a separate attendance system, so you don't need that. Collaborations, you can look at that later. Conferences, we don't need. Modules, you definitely do need. Quizzes, you don't need. Um, that's for you. So that's quizzes is where you can make uh, online assessments for your students. Modules, we're going to put all the way up at the top, okay? Outcomes we're going to move. Syllabus we're syllabus you might want to put up there uh, if you want to post your syllabus. Uh, that could be that can be pretty useful for students. Files we're never going to use. Pages are never going to be used for the students. People uh, grades we're going to hide even. Discussion assignments and announcements. Okay, so basically we are going to hide everything except home syllabus if you want it. I'm even going to hide that. Okay, and then home and modules, that's it, okay? So, so basically, how we're gonna organize our course is that students are only going to see modules, all right? And I'll explain that in a, in a few minutes, all right? Okay, so then we have uh, apps. Just totally ignore this screen for now. <laughs> and then featured options also ignore the screen, okay? Um, so most of these are turned off already. Basically anything you can turn off is already off. So, so just don't even have it on there. Okay. So that's our setup. So just to review, um, we have course details here. Um, the most important thing was that we went into more options. We click let students self enroll. We clicked update course details, and then we got our actual code. So this is how the students will sign up for the class. They'll self enroll. Okay, um, under sections, I set up, you know, whatever periods I'm teaching, you know, if I teach the same class multiple times a day, these are the sections, right? So I can divide it, you know, I can only view a, one class at a time in the gradebook. Navigation, we hit a bunch of stuff from students so that they don't get confused and we click save, okay? And then we uh, didn't even do anything with apps and featured options, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Um, and that is it. So those are the core settings. Uh, so go ahead and do that for your course that you're setting up and best of luck.